celebrating the best of Broadway in the heart of New York City. I'm Christine Johnson. And I'm Vladimir Zutia. Behind us and all around us are just some of the 41 theaters that make up the theater district. And this season, there is something for everyone on Broadway. And we are here to highlight it all. And I know just the place, so come along with us as we explore the best of Broadway. Taxi! The sights, the lights, the people, and at the center of it all, Broadway. This process that has taken 13 years to create Hell's Kitchen. Musical spectaculars, family dramas, and everything in between. It's not my father's cabaret. A-list actors performing steps from the bustle of Times Square. The thing I will take with me forever out of the show is the people. And new stars born. Here now the top contenders, fan favorites, and underdogs competing for theater's biggest honors. We're here at Sardi's, a fixture in the theater district for generations. Some of this year's nominees have already earned a place on the famous portrait gallery, and others may soon join their ranks. They definitely will. From theater legends to first-time performers, Dave Carlin outlines the high points of a very busy Broadway season. Helping your balance along. Big stars blazed onto Broadway. Daniel Radcliffe and Jonathan Groff in Merrily We Roll Along. Is there something about this show that tells you something about friendship? Even if relationships don't end in a perfect way, it doesn't mean that there wasn't a huge amount of meaning and value in them. Getting to celebrate this show and this moment with the two of them is the stuff that dreams are made of. It really is incredible. Jessica Lang and Jim Parsons in Mother Play. I love to play emotional turmoil. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. There's something complicated in the human dynamic of mother and child. Eddie Redmayne in Cabaret. Sarah Paulson in Appropriate. And I got out of the shower and there was a, a, a phone call telling me, which was wonderful. My single mom took me to see theater anytime she could. Jeremy Strong in An Enemy of the People. Liev Schreiber in Doubt. The theater for me is sort of the highest bar uh, as an actor. It just hits so many notes about polarization, about cancel culture. Rachel McAdams in Mary Jane and Leslie Odom Jr. in Pearly Victorious, who he spoke with alongside his nominated co-star Kara Young. It's super meaningful to have a reappraisal of this American classic. Two original shows are tied for top of the pack as most nominated, 13 each for Hell's Kitchen and Stereophonic. See, I learned the hard way. Hell's Kitchen with songs by Alicia Keys blends the jukebox musical format with a new dramatic narrative based on her life. And Stereophonic, set in a recording studio. In both are nominated actors making Broadway debuts. Hell's Kitchen's Malia Joy Moon. I think that making art that people can see themselves reflected in is probably like the biggest gift that you can give. And Sarah Pigeon of Stereophonic. I think it, it touches everyone. You think a fool could have done better. Audiences already knew the plots of many of this season's shows. And have you met our great ringmaster? Musical versions of classics, The Outsiders earned 12 nominations, seven for Water for Elephants. The Great Gatsby got one. Back to the Future has two nominations and a pair of adaptations with three each, The Notebook and Days of Wine and Roses, including one for previous winner and eight-time nominee Kelly O'Hara. Help us unpack that character. A beautiful human being with the disease of alcoholism, because the truth of this disease is that it wrecks lives. Revivals reinvigorated and rocked Broadway. The Who's Tommy came back. And so did Cabaret, The Wiz, Spamalot, and Gutenberg, the musical. Inclusion soared on Broadway. An LGBTQ story was central to Lempika. Originality and representation boosted Jaja's African hair braiding. And in Here Lies Love, It's all Filipino cast made Broadway history. I want my great-granddaughter to know I was here. 
The season saw women breaking through barriers on stage, backstage, and in every planning stage. Suffs about the suffragist movement, created by Shayna Taub, also its star. The whole theme is persistence in the face of impossible challenge. And Dave joins us now to talk a little bit more about how this has been such a big year for women on Broadway. Oh, big this season. For women, great strides. Suffs has that, you know, as a bedrock of the whole show. And then you have great performances, of course, and great roles for the actors. But what you also have this season, behind the scenes, the creatives are making those great strides as well. One category that really illustrates that, directing categories. There are ten of them, mm -hmm. seven are women. And that means meaningful stories are being told from different perspectives. And that's what we come to Broadway for. A Broadway newcomer leads the cast of Hell's Kitchen. Malia Joy Moon from Franklin Township, New Jersey, stepped into the spotlight, and now she is a rising star. And dreams come true for Grammy winner Alicia Keys and Malia Joy Moon, who stars in Hell's Kitchen. Me and my mother live on the 42nd floor of a 44-story building on 43rd Street. This being my debut, and I get to sing things that I grew up listening to. The musical is set in Manhattan Plaza, the real apartment building where Keys grew up. And just being able to even have this process that has taken 13 years to create Hell's Kitchen and all the beautiful people that I've met that have that believe in it, that support it, and and the theater community and my own family. Everyone looking higher. It's the Broadway debut for Moon. To be doing something that is near and dear to who I am and my authentic self is just. I mean, it is very surreal. The heart of the musical is friendships and the love between a mother and daughter. Shoshana Bean is nominated for her featured role as the teen's single mother. So I gotta let it all go. It's shot back from zero. For me to be able to sing this kind of music on a Broadway stage, it's beyond a dream come true. Good. Are you teaching me how to play piano right now? After 40 years on Broadway, Keisha Lewis gets her first Tony nomination for her role as the piano teacher who recognizes a spark. Anybody of any race, any nationality, any age can see themselves in our show. Anybody. The Outsiders has been a popular book since it was first published in 1967. It was one of my favorite books as a kid. Uh, of course, in 1983, the story of Ponyboy Curtis, his brothers, their friends, and foes hit the big screen, and now the beloved characters have come to life on the Broadway stage. Three of the actors have Tony nominations this year. We asked them what the coming-of-age story means to them. Stay who you are. Stay a dreamer and stay acknowledging and looking at the beauty in your life. Don't judge people by the cover of their book. Give them a chance. You know, just, you never know what someone's going through. This nomination and maybe even an award, I hope it only means that the work is impacting somebody somewhere, that I'm making you feel something. So let's talk more about The Outsiders. As I said, it's one of my favorite books from my childhood. S.C. Hinton, the author of that book, follows me on Twitter. Thank you very much, S.C. Hinton. Wow. Uh, but there's another big name attached to this production. Angelina Jolie is a producer of The Outsiders on the red carpet. She said it was her favorite book. What she said about Essie Hinton was how impressed she was that she wrote it at 15 years old and that she also knew so much about the inner thoughts and lives of boys. It is a competitive race this year for best play. Mary Jane and Mother Play focus on family dynamics. Prayer for the French Republic follows generations of a French Jewish family. Jaja's African hair braiding brings a Harlem salon to life. And Stereophonic is the most nominated play of the year with 13 nods. Stereophonic takes us inside the recording studio where a rock group is making music, but often life gets in the way. Get my bag and I'm on my way. Critics are singing the praises of Stereophonic, the most nominated play in Tony Awards history. 
Juliana Canfield is one of the five actors nominated for their featured performances. It's so cool to have been nominated for a record breaking number 13. 13, lucky 13. 13 Tony lucky number Awards. 13. <laughs> The play gives us an intimate look at the band's year-long process to record a new album. But music is often overshadowed by egos, personal conflicts. Canfield is Holly, the band's keyboard player. There's a moment in the play at the end where Diana announces that she is thinking about a solo career. That relationship feels so central to the play for me. The friendship between Holly and Diana is the constant in the play. At first, there's a sense of betrayal, but then there's also this moment where I feel like, oh, of course, why did I think that this would last forever? Fans of the HBO drama Succession know Canfield as Jess Jordan, Kendall Roy's assistant. The Yale School of Drama graduate has fond memories of performing in plays as a child in Rockland County, New York. Stereophonic is her Broadway debut. You don't come from a background in musical theater. No, I don't. And you never really played an instrument on stage no, on Broadway. No, ever. But there was something about playing an instrument in front of other people that just sent a chill through my veins. And the music is so much fun to sing and so evocative of the time that we're trying to recreate. We're in the studio, yep. and this is like kind of where the magic happens. So sold in the money With a certain 1970s vibe, there are the similarities to a legendary rock group. I mean, the comparisons have been made, certainly. And I love that band. I love Fleetwood Mac. What is it like when you're standing here and you all come up and everybody is giving you a standing ovation? I feel my smile. It's like I'm suddenly seven years old. It's lovely, and you don't get that in anything other than live theater. At Cabaret, dark days are ahead as we're transported to Germany in 1929 and 30. Hey, it's a career turn for this Oscar and Tony winning actor. I adore Cabaret. I think it is the most beautiful piece of writing. For me, when I was a kid, when I first saw it, it moved me, it thrilled me, I found it seductive, it also made me think, and all of those things felt like what I dream of when I go to the theatre. In Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club, Eddie Redmayne's MC is unlike anything we've seen before. He's a master of the nightlife and a harbinger of doom. I think so many people remember that version of Liza Minnelli singing it and, and the kind of glitz and the glamour of the piece and perhaps forget some of the, the darker side of it. Redmayne and his co-stars B.B. Newworth, Gail Rankin and Steven Skybell are all nominated for their roles. Your interpretation, the way that you use your body, is something I've never seen in the productions. How did you prepare for that? You don't get any sense of who he actually is, and he starts almost like bringing, in our production, bringing the characters together, almost like they're his toys mm -hmm. that he's kind of playing with. And gradually, as the piece goes on, he goes from this kind of kid at a party, this puppeteer at a party, to, to being this conductor as the horrors of fascism begin to kick in. And that's the part of my job I love the most, is the kind of research and the rehearsal, trying to throw the web wide with the conscious sort of knowledge that the character has no definition. So that was up to me to find. So movement was a real key in for me. Is this play as timely as it's ever been? Every day since I've been a part of the production, it, it feels tragically more pertinent. I feel like the piece plays almost in some ways as a compassionate warning, but hopefully in a way that thrills you and makes you think. What do you want people to feel as they walk out of here? Gosh, what a good question. What I dream of is that audiences come off 52nd Street and get thrown down this passage unexpectedly. They get lost, they get thrilled, they get seduced in some ways by these performers and dancers and then they watch a classic piece of brilliant musical theatre afresh. and that they are entertained, that they are made to think. 
Jessica Lange returns to Broadway in the new production, Mother Play. The Tony and Oscar winner explains why she keeps coming back to the theater. There's nothing that interests me more than uh, that kind of complexity. Jessica Lange's made a career of portraying women in turmoil, winning her two Oscars and a Tony, and now another Tony nomination. Going to those dark places. I don't know why I've always been drawn to that. So Lang leads a cast of just three actors, Jim Parsons and Celia Keenan Bolger, also nominated for Tonys. To work with Celia and Jim has been such a gift. It's emotionally draining. Yeah. How do you keep doing that over and over again? Well, play is a tough play. We're dealing with some really hard moments in people's lives. Hard moments the playwright, Paula Vogel, really lived. Paula was writing from a very personal point of view about her mother. So you have to be true to that. You cannot try to make a character sympathetic. You can only play what the writer has given you. At one point, Lang spends 13 minutes alone on stage, silent, as the audience listens. So let's talk about the scene where you have absolutely no dialogue. I read that you actually trained as a mime. I did years ago, yes. So I'm wondering like, if that played or helped you think that scene through. I think at least on a subconscious level, yes, it informed movement. So being silent for that long, mm -hmm. was it uncomfortable? I mean, did, is that something that you really have to train and work through? It was a fascinating exercise as an actor on stage to try to fill those 13 minutes and to keep the audience engaged. It kind of moves like water. The Tony Awards mark the end of Mother Play with the last performance the same day as the ceremony. It's, of course, always comes with, you know, mixed emotions. You're happy to be done, you're, but at the same time, it's been so, it's been such an exhilarating experience doing it. The Art of Dance exhilarated Broadway audiences with vital, creative, and wordless storytelling. And Dave Carlin has that. I can't explain. Well, the whole show is told through the language of dance and the language of music. Director, choreographer Justin Peck, back on Broadway with Illinois. I was able to get to create a show that could stand as a vehicle for this generation of great dance storytellers. All things go, all things go. Illinois follows Henry and his friends around a campfire, telling stories with no talking at all. The audience was crucial to the choreography in Here Lies Love, set in a disco for a sordid tale about Imelda Marcos of the Philippines. Choreographer Annie B. Parsons, seen here with the musical's creator David Byrne, expanded the dancing throughout a recrafted theater with movable platforms. In the musical adaptation of The Outsiders, this rain-soaked rumble packs a punch so big the audience feels like blows are landing on them. The electrifying work is by choreographers Rick and Jeff Cooperman, who are brothers. You know, when you think about a rumble, a lot of the touch points that we have are in the cinema. And there are all these tools that filmmakers have to make a fight feel really real. So you made it cinematic, and the actors can just focus on experiencing the blows, getting hit, and they can... They don't have to hold anything back. In Water for Elephants, about circus entertainers in the 1930s, a big top unfolds. We started the show with this physical work language, and then it evolved into this sort of elation of the, the day is done. My circus cast, I know when they say they can do it, they can do it. When they say they can't do another, they can't do another. In Hell's Kitchen, Camille A. Brown's choreography perfectly fits its Manhattan setting. New York has a way of moving and functioning, and within that you have so many individuals and personalities that to put that on stage was exciting. Choreography, such a huge part of Broadway history, sure. and this year, no exception to that, 
Illinois, though, that is told all through choreography. So does that then give it a leg up? Oh, it, it, it may, in fact, do that because this is Justin Peck. And what he does in this musical is make you feel the emotions, you know, really sweep over you all through dance. But Hell's Kitchen. Vibrant, colorful. Mm. Authentic. Yes. Camille A. Brown gives Hell's Kitchen in the city of New York a gift with that show. Yeah. And without the dance numbers, it's not the same show. Dave Carlin, thanks. Lincoln Center's David H. Koch Theater hosts the Tony Awards this year. Join the honorees for a night celebrating theater with performances from nominated shows. Ariana DeBose hosts the Tony Awards this Sunday, June 16th, live on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Thanks for joining us from Sardi's right here at the center of the theater district. I'm Vladimir Dutier. And I'm Christine Johnson. We will see you at the Tonys. The Tony Awards will air live from Lincoln Center this Sunday on CBS. As CBS 2's Dave Carlin reports, an army of workers is getting the arts complex ready for Broadway's biggest night. Lincoln Center's David Koch Theater is getting a Tony transformation ahead of a star-studded, ambitious award ceremony. <laughs> Setting the stage for host Ariana DeBose, who returns with extra workload. For her third year, she is also choreographer of the opening number and a producer. Set to perform during the ceremony are the casts of Stereophonic, Hell's Kitchen, Illinois, Cabaret, Merrily We Roll Along, Suffs, The Outsiders, The Who's Tommy, and Water for Elephants. Honored at this year's Tonys will be the legendary Cheetah Rivera of West Side Story, Bye Bye Birdie, and Chicago fame, who died in January at the age of 91. I live behind it. This is a blessing. Watching all the hustle and bustle at Lincoln Center from this spot across the street was Fernand Courtois. I'll be here, sit right here if I have a chance to get a seat because on Sunday I know it's going to be incredible. Alicia Key and uh, this and uh, that. People in this neighborhood are very glad the Tony Awards are at Lincoln Center. It's exciting and it's good for business. And there'll be a big buzz in the neighborhood. Nearby restaurants will stay open later than usual on Sunday. We're coming right from Father's Day and rolling right into the Tonys. The outdoor summer stage at Lincoln Center becomes a viewing party called the American Express Broadway Fanfare Simulcast, hosted by Skylar Aston. The entire property becoming Tony Town. Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. This weekend, the best and brightest stars on Broadway will be honored at the 77th Annual Tony Awards. Among them, C.J. Phillip, an actor, dancer, and educator from Baltimore. She is the winner of the 2024 Excellence in Theater Education Award. Phillip is the creative director of Dance and Be More, which serves as a gateway to theater, dance, and music for people of all ages. She told us how she felt when she heard the news thoughts of my mom and my staff and the young people that we work with and all the folks who uh, even make an award like this possible just you know, filled my heart with lots of joy. Joy. And you can watch the Tony Awards this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS. Big stars blazed onto Broadway. Daniel Radcliffe and Jonathan Groff in Merrily We Roll Along. Is there something about this show that tells you something about friendship? Even if relationships don't end in a perfect way, it doesn't mean that there wasn't a huge amount of meaning and value in them. Getting to celebrate this show and this moment with the two of them is the stuff that dreams are made of. It really is incredible. Jessica Lange and Jim Parsons in Mother Play. I love to play emotional turmoil. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. There's something complicated in the human dynamic of mother and child. Eddie Redmayne in Cabaret, Sarah Paulson in Appropriate. And I got out of the shower and there was a, a, a phone call telling me, which was wonderful. My single mom took me to see theater anytime she could. Jeremy Strong in An Enemy of the People, Liev Schreiber in Doubt. The theater for me is sort of the highest bar uh, as an actor. It just hits so many notes about polarization about cancel culture. <laughs> Rachel McAdams in Mary Jane and Leslie Odom Jr. in Pearly Victorious, who we spoke with alongside his nominated co-star Kara Young. It's super meaningful to have a reappraisal of this American classic. 
two original shows are tied for top of the pack as most nominated, 13 each for Hell's Kitchen and Stereophonic. See, I learned the hard way. Hell's Kitchen with songs by Alicia Keys blends the jukebox musical format with a new dramatic narrative based on her life. And Stereophonic, set in a recording studio. In both are nominated actors making Broadway debuts. Hell's Kitchen's Malia Joy Moon. I think that making art that people can see themselves reflected in is probably like the biggest gift that you can give. And Sarah Pigeon of Stereophonic. I think it, it touches everyone. I think a fool could have done better. Audiences already knew the plots of many of this season's shows. And have you met our great ringmaster? Musical versions of classics, The Outsiders earned 12 nominations, seven for Water for Elephants. The Great Gatsby got one. Back to the Future has two nominations and a pair of adaptations with three each, The Notebook and Days of Wine and Roses, including one for previous winner and eight-time nominee Kelly O'Hara. Help us unpack that character. A beautiful human being with the disease of alcoholism. Because the truth of this disease is that it wrecks lives. Revivals reinvigorated and rocked Broadway. The Who's Tommy came back. And so did Cabaret. The I want my great granddaughter to know I was here. The season saw women breaking through barriers on stage, backstage, and in every planning stage. Suffs about the suffragist movement created by Shayna Taub, also its star. I'm Ariana DeBose and I am hosting the Tony Awards. I love seeing so many women up on stage because it brings more women to the theater as well. Young Ariana would have loved to see Hell's Kitchen, especially because how many times do you see a white mom with a beautiful brown child? It's rare, you don't even see it in film. You know what and I mean? And that's something and you that relate to. That is something to. that I relate to. I have a fabulously beautiful, wonderful mother who happens to be white. And she has a beautiful black Puerto Rican daughter. And that is a wonderful thing. Women make up seven of ten directing nominees in both the musical and play categories. In the theater district, Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. And a quick thanks to Dave and Kathy McGee and the whole team that's worked on these pieces for months, mm. getting us ready because tonight is the big night. Watch the 77th annual Tony Awards hosted by Ariana DeBose uh, at 8 p.m. right here on CBS2 streaming on Paramount+. Plus.